Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, just making another video. Gonna, it's kind of just talk. I'm gonna talk about sandpaper uh, versus stones, convex versus V. Ah, sorry. But not in the way that most people talk about them. I'm not gonna try and persuade you to either one. I'm just gonna talk about some things I've realized in using sandpaper over the past month, you know, a uh, month or two. You guys have seen what I've done and my experiences. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about, I was high on sandpaper. I was all about it. How I was surprised, you know, a month or two ago, I was surprised how well it worked. Uh, sorry, I just turned on the music. Um, I was surprised how well it worked, especially with some steels such as... <laughs> every time I try and do that, like off the fly on the camera it never works but um you know some steel such as s90v it touched it up just fine um so I, I was happy i was surprised so i was really i was awesome about it i figured you know awesome you know i got 320 grit sandpaper 800 grit 2000 and it was polishing up knives quite well and giving them hair shaving foam book paper slicing edges i was very happy with it uh over the month or two I'm still very happy. I mean, it still do fine. But I realized some of the sandpaper's limitations. It's that even at 300 grit, it's not as aggressive of a cutter, I guess, as stones. I would think. I never had a real quality stone. I've had a cheap five dollar stone from Home Depot. But from other people say, it seems like certain diamond stones cut very fast and they cut very aggressively and quickly. Sandpaper doesn't really do that. Uh, I, I would, I would guess. That if you take 300 grit sandpaper and, and a 300 grit diamond stone, uh, or maybe even a 300 grit regular stone, and you do the same number of passes on the stone with a blade, um, you're gonna have more material removed from the diamond. That's just my guess. But anyway, that's kind of off topic. Uh, so sandpaper, some of its limitations. When it gets dirty, I think I feel like it's a little harder to clean because you can't really completely soak it, but you gotta kind of run some water over it, take it off with your fingers, but if you take it off with a paper towel or a napkin, and the more aggressive sandpaper, it will tear up the napkin. Now you got little fibers on your sandpaper instead of metal, you know, instead of, instead of metal particles. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but, and then also, the sandpaper, it will lose its abrasiveness. You know, you use sandpaper enough, I'm sure everybody knows that you gotta change it out. So, for example, and I would say how you know cheap and cost effective sandpaper was, especially for the performance you got. But if you think about it, over time, you know, I've had to replace my sandpaper since then. And let's say that you get like six sheets, for example, you know, let's say in, in a package like this, you get six sheets of 2,000, you get, although I think this is only three, but um, let's just, for example, well no, it's five sheets, sorry guys. So let's say you get five sheets in every thing of sandpaper. So you, this is, and let's say they're each five bucks. So this is five dollars, so you get 320, 800, and 2,000. Five dollars each, you get five sheets. So that's fifteen dollars on a sharpening setup. That's awesome, that's extremely cheap and it'll get you great results. But you sharpen on a regular basis, like I'm starting to have to do with a job where I actually use my knives for most of the day. They get bogged down. I have to clean the sandpaper more, which is a little annoying, not a big deal. But the sandpaper will lose its abrasiveness, especially on something like S90V or even S30V, you know, or even 154CM. So. It'll lose its abrasiveness and in time you have to buy a new sandpaper. For me, at the rate I'm going, I probably buy a new sandpaper once a month. Maybe a little more than that. But for argument's sake, let's say you buy, you spend 15 bucks a month on sandpaper. In 10 months, it's $150. That kind of really adds up, you know? You wouldn't think about that. Now, for example, let's say a 6x2 DMT stone, diamond stone, that theoretically should last you 5, 10 years, is 40 bucks about let's say you get three of those the coarse fine extra fine 
that's $120. So already in 10 months, you're already more expensive using sandpaper than the DMT stones. Um, so sandpaper is a great starting tool, I feel. And if you just, if you like how it sharpens and you like the convex you get from it, by all means, I mean keep using it. Keep if you're willing to spend, I mean that's fine. I'm just letting you guys know since I was on such a you know high on sandpaper before. I just want to let you guys know that it can actually get expensive if you have to keep reusing it or if you have to keep rebuying it. Granted, the DMTs are higher upfront cost, but yeah, I, I think sandpaper is a great teaching tool into sharpening. It got me much better at sharpening. I would have never before been able to sharpen um, to the point where you saw in one of my other videos, I can slice through foam, ba foam book paper without, you know, without a problem with ease. And that's not, that's, I can get that on every knife I have, which is only four, but I can get that on any knife you give me, which is awesome. But using the sandpaper that's cheap allowed me to get the experience. So now when I do buy expensive, more expensive stones, I have the knowledge, I have the technique, I have the skill. I'll be able to get more out of those more expensive stones. Um, so I think it's a great introductory tool. I really do. And another introductory tool, just on the side of things, get a knife with a soft, crappy steel. Because if you use it a lot, it'll dull quickly and you get a chance to sharpen it again. And you just practice sharpening more and more and more and that's how you get good. All right. Next with that. But, all right, so that's pretty much my sandpaper versus stones kind of thing. So just letting you guys know, I'm not saying anyone's better. Do what you like. If you like stones, get stones. If you like sandpaper, stay with sandpaper, that's fine. But anyway, all right, so next point. Um, convex versus V. With sandpaper, you guys know that if you sharpen with sandpaper extensively, you tend to get a convex edge on your V grind. You know, your V turns from that to that kind of, because the sandpaper rolls, especially with a soft backing, like I use, like a foam book, because I like convex, I think I like convex edges. I want to, I wanted to experiment with that. I wanted to see if I can convex those, because in theory, they're supposedly stronger. They sound like they're stronger because it's the same angle with more material behind it or, you know, stuff like that. I'm not going to get into talks about that. There's other people with a lot more knowledge than me that talk about it on YouTube. Um, so let's, for example, my Sabenza, uh, my Chris Reeves on the Mzan. Um, this comes with a convex edge. So, and this is, you know, my favorite knife. So I sharpen it with sandpaper and the sandpaper on the soft backing pretty much conforms to the convex edge. But I feel that convex is kind of tough to sharpen, tougher than a V edge. Because if, let's, for example, if a V edge is this obviously okay to sharpen and the knife goes up here to sharpen if you lay the knife flat down you're on this angle okay and then you start to tilt the knife up to try and hit this edge properly uh, you're gonna go over this little bump here and then you're gonna be on this edge and you'll kind of feel because this edge is bigger you'll kind of feel that you're on here and then you could when you start making the passes you'll be on this edge and your contact area is this whole edge, okay? This is your contact area with a V. Um, with a convex, on the other hand, let's say your knife edge is this, obviously exaggerated, okay guys? So when you sharpen this, like so let's say it's a hollow ground into a convex, right? This is obviously exaggerated. But so when you're laying the knife down flat, it's on here or something like this, right? And then you start to roll it, now on a convex, because since it's you know round and radius, you have a bunch of tangent lines that go you know here, 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 here. You see what I mean? So there's almost like infinite number of edges because it's round. It could just keep rocking, and it's harder to tell that you're on the that you're on the actual cutting edge. Um, even you know if you highlight it with sharpie, if you put all this with sharpie. If you're doing it right, you should only, only the sharpie in this part should be removed because you shouldn't be touching this because it's round, theoretically. Obviously, small convex edges, the sandpaper on a soft backing will conform. Hence, the, you know, you get in the convex. But because this rocks more, you have to focus more and be more precise to hit the edge. So convex edges might not be the best idea for beginners. Not because somebody can't learn quick, but because if you're not getting a good result, you might get discouraged. 
Whereas here, with the V-Edge, I feel like it's easier. You saw my other video. I did, when I talk about this, I did a couple passes just talking, not really paying attention, on the sandpaper, on the phone book, literally 20 seconds of passes on each side, or total, 20 seconds total, passes on each side, and the thing shaved. I mean, went right through the phone book paper, no problem. Um, on my Umnum Zan, I have to focus a little bit more to do that because it rolls. I don't know exactly, I don't know exactly when I'm on the cutting edge. You know, if I'm here, I'm still on the bevel of the knife. I'm still on the, you know, second bevel or whatever you want to call it, or the second grind. Uh, the, uh, yeah, let's just call it the bevel. That's probably the right term. I'm still on the bevel, but it rocks. I could be on, you know, I could be on the bevel, but be at different angles. With a V, you can, if you're on the bevel, you're on the bevel, and you're on the cutting edge, unless you have a micro bevel. But you put that on, and if you're putting a micro bevel on, you're probably advanced in sharpening when you know what the hell you're doing. Not that people don't, but don't get political on me, guys. <laughs> uh, but so that's that's my idea. So sandpaper will eventually make a knife convex. I've sharpened this a couple times on sandpaper just because I got it really dull from sandpapering the finish off and then hand rubbing it uh, to have this kind of finish on it, which I like a lot. Um, so and even with sandpapering, I start knocking off the shoulder down here by accident at first, and I start to do it. So this is even getting um, completely just lost my train of thought. No idea where I was going at with that. No idea where I was going at with that. Oh well. But I, oh yeah, so the shoulders are starting to get knocked off of the Mannix. I can tell. My camera's not going to be able to pick it up, but there's a, like a, a wear line almost where the bevel meets the hollow or the saber grind. So it's starting to get convex. This already is. I'm sure if I sharpen this more, I don't have to because it's S90V. I barely have to sharpen it. Um, this will st every knife will start get start to get convex on sandpaper and foam book paper, and therefore start to get harder to sharpen, theoretically. So possibly maybe a beginner can start to get a knife sharp, and then it will be more convex, and they won't be able to find that straight, you know, that straight edge, and um, he'll start to have less success. And if you guys are wondering if there's a point to this video, there really isn't. I'm just kind of talking about my experience with sandpaper and convex and just letting you guys know. So maybe the next person that tries this can be one step ahead of the game. You know, one step ahead of me. That's the whole point of learning and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that's my ideas. Let me know if you guys have the same experience, if you agree with me, if you disagree. Am I, if what I'm saying is wrong, let me know. But that's been my, that's been my um, general experience. I personally like the idea of a convex edge. Um, so that's why I kept sandpaper this long. Now, if Christmas is coming up, I have some money. I might want to try and get either like the Spyderco profile set because it's fairly affordable. You get a medium and a fine and they're compact and portable. Um, or yeah, I might get a DMT stone, or two of them. Because I like the idea of, you put it down, you don't have to hold the sandpaper in place while you sharpen and worry about your fingers and stuff like that. Um, I like the fact that the, it could just be a stone, it's heavy, it's got the padding, it just it just stays there and you could focus on sharpening more. Um, but yeah, so take this video for what it's worth, guys. I'm not trying to persuade you to or for anything. I honestly, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't have enough experience in the knife world to try and persuade you guys. You know, I could say my opinions, I could say the obvious, like, you know, <laughs> I don't even know. And I could say the obvious, like, this Umnum Zan is extremely high quality. <laughs> that you can't really debate with me on. But So these are my experiences with this convex versus V, the sandpaper versus stones. Take it for what it's worth. I hope you guys got something out of it. I hope it wasn't just complete ramble at the end of a long day. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, and don't think just because you have a V-Edge, you can't use sandpaper. You absolutely can. I get amazingly quick, awesome edges with sandpaper on a V-Edge, just that your V-Edge will eventually turn into a convex. And to get it back into a V, you're going to have to use a stone or a hard backing on the sandpaper and take concentration and patience because you have to turn a round thing into a some into a straight thing. That's a lot of constant 
um, consistent strokes on each side of the knife. So it's going to be, once you have a fully convex edge, it's going to be tough to put it back to V, unless, you know, if you're experienced or something. All right, guys, 15 minutes. I'm going to cut myself off. I'm going to drink some more whiskey. I'm probably going to play some video games and relax. But, uh, you know, hopefully this helped. Let me know what you thought. Uh, I love I love seeing the comments. I love responding to you guys. So, uh, peace out. See you in the next video.